On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1953. We're going to be taking a look at Doris Day and Gordon McRae, and they're going to be performing by the light of the silvery moon. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I think with tonight's video, I'm going to have a bit of fun with the title because it's not a usual thing for me to look at performances that I've never seen before. Being a professional musician and guitar teacher for over 15 years, I've seen a hell of a lot of performances and listened to a hell of a lot of music. But this from 1953 is slightly before my time. So we're going to be jumping into it. As you guys know, we look at all kinds of music here on the channel. So looking forward to getting into this one. And full disclosure, I know that my dad used to watch Doris Day movies movies, uh, but I haven't really seen any myself. So I've isolated the vocals and run them through the pitch monitoring software. So we'll see Doris's voice and Gordon's voice as a yellow line on the screen. And there are two voices harmonizing with each other. So the software does get a little bit confused sometimes, but when they're singing independently, we'll be able to have a look at exactly what's going on. But let's get into it, see how they get on. song to my mother when he was courting her. I'm glad they got together. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to spoon to my honey I'll croon love's tune. Honeymoon, 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 keep it shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams, will be coming soon by the silvery moon. Place, park. Scene, dark. Silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast, to. Me, you. Sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Begun. Dialogue, where would you like to spoon? My cue with you Underneath, underneath the, the silvery moon, moon By the light Not the dark, but the light Of the silvery moon Not the sun, but the moon I want a spoon Not croon, but spoon To my honey I'll croon Love's too. Honeymoon, honeymoon, keep a shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams, will be coming soon by the silvery moon. Ah, oh, hasn't this been a wonderful day? It's been more like Christmas than Thanksgiving. Me being home, you getting started at the bank. You know, I think we have more to be thankful for this Thanksgiving than anybody. Yeah. Except Gregory. <laughs> honeymoon. 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 Keep it shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love dreams. We'll be coming soon. By the silvery moon. And there we have it. Now, to put this in perspective, back in the 50s, if you try and imagine, forget everything that you know about music now, but imagine back then that all they had was the radio. You just heard voices and you heard songs. You didn't have music videos. And this is what I find really interesting is that looking into a lot of the movies from around this time and before, they had songs in them that were being sung by the actors and it's almost like 1950s version of MTV because 
the songs were then released with the movie and, you know, they'd get to number one in the charts because it effectively does have a music video. It just so happens that the music video is about two hours long and has an actual story in there and has proper acting. And when you start listening to these two perform, you can tell that these are trained voices. These aren't actors who are trying to sing. These are singers who are acting as well. And very much with the current day movies, you'll find actors that are actors and then they have to have singing lessons or, <laughs> as you guys have pointed out and definitely you pointed me in the direction of movies where they've had to resort to using auto-tune because the actors can't hit the pitches because they don't have a trained voice. This is just the difference in the times that you had such great acting, first of all, but such great singing. When you think about that as a business model, I mean, it's pretty much perfect because you've got a captive audience who are watching the movie and they are watching the artist perform effectively because they're singing the songs that will then be released as a single or as an album with the movie. And obviously the people in the movie have got to have the talent to begin with in order to perform it at the same level as all of the musicians and artists that people can hear on the radio. But if you can get the talent to be in the movies and be this good, when you start selling the songs, it's guaranteed to sell because you're effectively selling a music video and you can really see why music videos took off in the future because it had already been proven in the 1950s and the 60s. Pretty much any band or artist that got themselves on TV or in movies, they would make a hell of a lot of sales because of all of that extra exposure. So taking it all the way back to the beginning of the performance, one thing that I want to point out is how well produced and mixed this is for the movie because sometimes when you've got dialogue that's actually being mic'd up and you might have a boom mic over the actors, that is going to have the sound of the room and it is always going to be a unique sound depending on the space that you're in and uh, you know whether you've got reflective surfaces, all of that kind of stuff where the sound waves are going to be bouncing around all over the place. So we've got that here. They are talking in the room but then the song comes in and the way that the song has been put together the voices are really prominent over the top of the backing which is great because it sits it in exactly the right place for this to sound believable. You will see other movies where the song comes in and it's obviously a recorded track in the studio and it just sounds nothing like the dialogue that you've just heard before because they're in totally different environments. But it's great here because it's such a natural progression into the song. But let's listen on a bit. I want to spoon to my honey I'll croon loves to honeymoon 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 here when Gordon comes in there's such fullness to the sound that you know that okay this is a little bit different but with Doris's voice it just really just goes over so well and this is probably to do with the fact that the mic that they're using in the room here is a different mic to what they would record on and the mic that they've used to record on in the studio has a lot more sensitivity to the bottom end because of these low notes we've got going on from Gordon being a baritone. Honeymoon. Honeymoon. I mean, he's got a lot of body in his sound right down there. That's a G sharp two. So when we look at our ranges over here, you can see that the bass range, the E2 is down here and we had a G sharp two. So, you know, right at the low end of that baritone range and then he does ascend with his voice. So it will take him more into that midsection of the baritone range. But we have got some low notes going on here and he's still got all of that tone in there. Sometimes when you try and sing too low, you lose a lot of the tone, but it's great because Gordon has that. And when we're looking at Doris's voice, she's pretty much going to be in and around. We can see it on the screen here, the pitch monitoring software, the C4 and 
to take that an octave higher. Actually, it's going to be two octaves higher than what Gordon just sang. So she'll be at the G sharp four rather than the G sharp two. So we'll have a look at Doris's voice and we're going to isolate it and really take that backing down so that we can hear it more clearly. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to spoon. To my honey, I'll croon loves too. So she's got this really natural vibrato that comes in all the time. We can see it on the screen here on the pitch monitoring software. Not only that, she's really accurate with her pitch. As we go back, you'll just be able to hear this really relaxed delivery that she has. I mean, she's not hitting really high notes here, but Still, just this kind of thing, the sliding between notes, the glissando that she does all the way down to this C-sharp 4. The other thing about Doris's voice that makes it so accessible is because it is so similar to her talking voice. And we've actually got the opposite uh, with Gordon's voice, but have a listen to Doris when she's talking and then I'll skip it over to when she's singing. My father used to sing this song to my mother when he was courting her. By the light. It's almost as if the only thing that's happened here is somebody's turned up the volume, but it's exactly the same voice. And this is because, yes, she is singing where she's just been talking in terms of pitch. So she isn't having to just get her voice up to ridiculous height. It's still going to sound like she's talking, but listen to all of the technique here. Of the silvery moon. And you can see on the pitch monitoring software that vibrato on the C sharp 4, which is really consistent, bang on with her notes as she descends with that run just stopping off at the F sharp 4 and the E4. So she's hitting notes really accurately, is employing all of the technique that you want to hear from a singer, but it sounds like her talking voice. The tone is identical. I want to spoon. To my honey, I'll croon loves to honeymoon. Honeymoon, honeymoon. Try and log in your head Gordon's voice and then compare it to his voice when he comes in with his vocal. Ah, oh, hasn't this been a wonderful day? It's been more like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Me being home, you getting started at the bank. You know, I think we have more to be thankful for this Thanksgiving than anybody. Yeah. Except Gregory. <laughs> honeymoon. Honeymoon. It's almost like when Gordon starts to sing, it goes into this honeymoon, honeymoon. And his voice takes on a different personality. And when we take it back again, listening to him talking, let me just hear that again. Me being home. Me being home. He's kind of got that in there, but it's kind of me being home like that. It's more placed in the head. And yes, I know that we have different microphones, but you can just tell with his talking voice that he's not going me being home and applying singing technique when he's talking because they're two totally different things. But the point is that it highlights Doris Day's vocal ability, but the way that she matches her talking voice with her singing voice. And it's not something that she's just tried to get her singing voice to sound like her talking voice. She's just singing with that freedom, that technique that she talks with. You'll be listening to somebody and their voice is totally different when they're singing to when you hear them talk because they've learned to sing. They're using their diaphragm. They've got, uh, you know, diaphragmatic support in there. They're conserving their breath, they're concentrating on pitch, they're applying vibrato, they're doing all of these different things. So it sounds different to when they're talking, because when you talk, you don't think about any of that stuff. Whereas Doris, she really does sound like a natural singer. And I think that's pretty much the thing that every single vocalist wants is to have the freedom in their singing voice that they have with their talking voice and for them to be the same thing. It really does strike me that Doris has this and she had this. It's interesting in this section as well, we get a greater appreciation of where Gordon takes his voice higher to harmonize with Doris's voice. And it shows you that Doris isn't singing high here at all. 
And this is something that can be misleading. It sounds like sometimes female vocalists are just singing higher because of the nature of their tone, just naturally being thinner and sounding more head voicey. Of the dark, but the light. Of the I mean, these are the same notes. No, is what Gordon singing, and then she's going. No, same note there. Just to point out that we don't have both vocalists here singing exactly the same melody, but the notes are in the same octave. So it means that the call and response that we get are with notes that are really similar pitch wise, even though they sound a lot different because it's a man singing and a woman singing. But like I said in the intro, this is something that I've never heard before. So as with all of my videos, I tend to jump into the background a bit. So I want to just talk about Doris Day as a vocalist and the fact that she started out as a singer and was a singer, but then got into acting, having absolutely no acting experience at all. She was actually touring at the time as a singer. And originally she wanted to be a dancer and Unfortunately, at the age of 15, she was in a car accident. But when I say a car accident, it was a serious one because it was with a freight train and it totally smashed her right leg. And while she was recovering, she was listening to the radio and she started singing along with songs on the radio and realized that she could sing and she enjoyed it. And she paid particular attention to Ella Fitzgerald and really studied her vocal. And this is something that so many great singers have done. And sometimes on this channel, you get or I'll get a comment that is from a troll that says, oh, why don't you just appreciate the music, listen to it and don't analyze it. There's no point. What they're doing is, you know, God given or it's just a talent and just accept it. The reason we analyze things is in order for the next generation to be great as well. Like Doris Day, she analyzed Ella Fitzgerald to the point where, where she said that she studied her subtle way, uh, the way that she shaded her voice. So she was looking at all of the details that she could hear through the radio and apply it to her own voice. And sometimes it's just a natural analyzing that goes on. For example, Doris, her father was a music teacher and he was a choir master as well. So I'm sure that there would have been that background influence in there that she found that she had this talent, but she'd probably been listening to her dad and a lot of singing in the past that was just tuning her ear and she was learning music as a language rather than having to learn it later on as, you know, notes on a piece of paper. It was her mum who heard her singing and got her singing lessons and the singing teacher only charged for one lesson out of three and she was having three lessons a week. So she saw such potential in Doris's voice that she really wanted to nurture that talent and that really is what being a teacher is all about. So it's great that she found a good teacher that could supply that kind of education for her. But again, she's practicing a hell of a lot. So you don't get to this kind of level without putting in the hours. She then got her first jobs on the radio. And at that point, it was Barney Rapp who heard her and he was an orchestra leader, jazz musician himself. And he suggested that she changed her surname from Kappelhof uh, because she has German ancestry to Day because he said it would just be easier and just flow a little bit better. So from then on, she performed as Doris Day and she had her first hit in 1945 and that was Sentimental Journey. So she'd been singing for almost two years on Bob Hope's weekly radio show. She was touring extensively as well. And this is when she got the offer for the lead role in a movie called Romance on the High Seas. And this is in 1948 and she had never done any acting. So she was surprised, but she did the audition and it was Michael Curtiz, the director who gave her the part. And I think he just liked that she seemed like the girl next door, really down to earth. But you can tell that she's just got a talent for acting as well and being so natural on screen. So 
she was in the movie and it was a huge success and uh, one of the songs from the movie called It's Magic turned into a number two hit for Doris Day in the charts and from then on I mean that really did start the ball rolling. It's great to have a look at her voice in a little bit more detail because you get an appreciation of that fundamental singing ability that she had and the amount of work that went into that and the acting was just a totally random thing that happened but just something that she had an affinity for. But anyway Thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. It is a little bit different tonight, but just another great one to look at because we've got great vocal talent on show. As always, keep those requests and suggestions coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!